10 to 9 this morning. We are turning our attention to what to look out for. If the sport isn't going to do it for you this weekend, there's plenty of uh, film and television alternatives, including Sue Murphy, the ability to go and sit in an actual cinema. <laughs> I know I haven't actually got there yet because um, I was saying I was saying to you guys yesterday I went to book a quiet place, and um, because cleverly the the company who distributes that said that it has to be experienced in the cinema and I was like I totally agree with you because <laughs> if you've seen if you've seen the first film it's just like have you seen the first film? This is John quiet. Krasinski and Emily Blunt. Yeah. Uh, no, I haven't seen it. It is. I don't know if you'd like it though. It's a bit horror-y. but um, the horror it's, is stupid. <laughs> But it's it's more tension than horror, if you know what I mean. But th they just layer the horror all, or the tension all the way through it. And by the end of it, when you're in a dark cinema and you're experiencing that and you're completely immersed in it, it's a different experience than watching it in your house on a screen. So, um, yeah, like, I can understand why that happened. But I, I went to book it yesterday and it was sold out. And there was part of me that was like, damn it. And the other part of me was like, yay, people are going to cinema again. This is great. So, like, there's limited seating. So if you are going to cinemas this weekend, my advice would be book, book, book in advance and go see whatever Irish film you can. But there's another one called The Father that's out this weekend, and it's Anthony Hopkins. Um, who picked up the Oscar for it and he has uh, early onset dementia in it and it's kind of, he, he's struggling with his, his life and his daughter's played by, brilliantly by Olivia Coleman. So there's two really good films in the cinema this weekend and, and remember like a lot of stuff didn't get released. So you suddenly have these films that would have been out in the States or everywhere else and they're suddenly getting releases here. So there's tons of stuff that's coming up, you know. And production as well, I assume, is going to kick into gear. Like next year is going to be a vintage year for film and TV. Yeah, I was actually reading the New York Times yesterday. They had an article called The Show Must Go On. And basically everything is just really starting to kick into gear. There's so many projects that have to be pushed back. And if you think about the big productions, like a lot of the stuff that we saw, saw over the last year was people in two rooms, moving from room to room with small camera crews. And that was it. The big productions couldn't go ahead because the amount of people that work in it and have to work closely mm. on it. So all of those are going to start kicking into gear again. It's just so nice to have the cinema back in film like that experience it can't be matched you know? yeah I don't, I don't think i could watch a malcolm and marie sequel to be quite honest with you i think we've, <laughs> we've done our era of uh, lockdown uh, production Lo and, yeah. and i'm okay with that being and over it was fine it was yeah. fine yeah it's in the past yeah. what, what else are we looking at when it comes to new and shiny things oh my god there's so much stuff out i have a list of six things so i'll just go through the, the kind of top ones that i really liked the first one i'm going to mention the crystal palace doc it's um up on, up on amazon, amazon prime from last friday and um, these are 50 minute episodes i think there's about five or six of them all together it's do you know what i, I kind of a little bit fatigued by the whole football documentary thing i feel like every football club at the moment is like do you know what we have to do a documentary we haven't got mm. one but I really liked this one because, I mean, we all know the, the struggles that Crystal Palace had with the administration, but I didn't know the fine detail of it. I mean, the story is incredible. Um, the fans getting behind them, the players insisting that they wanted to stay on and play for Crystal Palace, losing 10 points in the championship, trying to get back up in, in 2013. The story is just amazing. Uh, the only complaint I have about it is that it moves very fast. So... It's a brilliant story that you can easily spend a good bit of time telling, but it felt in the first episode, it was just flying through all of the details. Um, but it's it's like the access they have to everyone in the club, they've actually got footage from the 2012, 2013 season. And they're doing interviews with players, managers, chairman now about that season and what happened and everything that happened up in the lead up from 2010 when they went into administration. It's for Crystal Palace docs, or for fans, it, they're just going to love it. But I think it's just a, it, there was something really nice about watching something where a football club means so much to these people. It's not, I hate, I hate saying it's not Man City because obviously Man City means a lot to Man City fans, but it's not, it doesn't have tons of money coming into it where they can pick any player that they want and they can bring them in. They really bring players through from the local area. They spend a lot of time with their like their fans actually went to protest it at the bank when they went into administration. Like this is a real home football club. And that was really nice. It was a really nice thing to watch. And it kind of reminds you why people love the game, why people love football. And I just actually really I just really liked the doc. That was really good. Great stuff. So that's on Amazon at the moment. And just yeah. a quick roundup of what else is is new. Yes, yeah, so we'll just fly into the other one. So Loki is the one that's out in Disney. That went out on Wednesday. I'm sure people have already uh, dipped into it. It's six episodes. Tom Hiddleston having the time of his life. Like Tom Hiddleston most loved playing Loki. The God of Mischief, the amount of stuff you can get into with that, it's just really, really good. But the real star of this is Owen Wilson. And he plays a, a like a timekeeper. He basically is protecting time. 
and Loki has messed with the time travel aspect and he, he's been become a variant. So Owen Wilson has to ensure that he basically uh, he's basically brought to heel, but he decides that he's going to make <laughs> he's going to make him chase another variant in the time. Like this is a really complicated thing for something that's actually just set up for the two of them to have banter, and that's fine. <laughs> like, I always love the way Marvel make these like really complicated plot lines, but the real beauty of it is the witty one liners that they have at the end of every every scene. <sighs> But Tom Hiddleston's great. Like, he's really, really good in it. And uh, honestly, I haven't seen Owen Winston this good in ages. And I always feel a bit, there's a bit of tragedy around Owen Winston for me. And whatever he's in, Anthony, I want him to do well. And it's just so nice to see him in something where he looks like he's genuinely enjoying himself. Like, don't get me wrong, it's Owen Winston in the suit. It's just Owen Winston again. Mm. But it's actually quite good. Um, the other thing that I was really surprised by is Sweet Tooth on Netflix. Um, I think this is more of a family kind of thing. But... Uh, like one of those ones that when you, you know when you watch it and you're just like actually this is fine like it's not something i'd be really bored by the first few minutes are really good because the virus is taken over and you're kind of outside them and suddenly all these oh we uh just uh, seem to be having a few troubles with your line there, Sue, so we'll uh, re-establish that in just a moment. But uh, A Quiet Place 2, Loki, uh, Sweet Tooth, When Eagle's There, some of her newer suggestions. Once we get Sue back, we will just uh, give a quick mention to the Friends reunion, which, by the way, when I saw that there was a Friends reunion happening, I was like, right, okay, so what's it going to be? Five episodes? Ten episodes? I can't wait for this new great cast that they've announced and uh, for there to be more hilarity coming from the scene of Friends over the next little while. But as it turns out, it was actually just a chat show. The Friends reunion was just a chat show, which was deeply disappointing for me. Of course, uh, it wasn't disappointing for uh, people who enjoyed the Matt LeBlanc memes, but for me, it was deeply disappointing that this actually wasn't a new season of Friends. So reunion... I'm not sure they should have called it that. I think they should have said, we're getting the gang back together for a chat show, not an actual reunion. Because a reunion to me is, they're making a new TV show. But that's not, uh, that's not what happened. Finally then, we have to mention what Sue is still watching, which is The Mayor of Easttown. And as a television expert, as an actual qualified television expert, Sue basically destroyed her own creed by ruining Mayor of Easttown for our own Tommy Rooney. We got a screen grab of how this actually happened. We've blacked out any spoilers, don't worry. So Sue Murphy texted Tommy on the 29th of May, 2021, 22 minutes past eight, and said, I'm putting in my theory for East Town now before Monday. I think, this is, it's Tommy Rooney on the line. I'm that, here. That's not a spoiler. That's a theory. She, Sue Murphy nailed it. Like I had to black out so the rest of So she got it right. Stuff. She predicted it she right. Gave me a full, she ruined it on me. She ruined it on me. Absolutely destroyed it on me. Um... But no, nah, she didn't really. It's actually such good TV. Have you watched it yet? No, I I, I no. haven't. It's part like I it, mean, I really want to. It was good. Them. It was good, and there was no way that she could have got that out beforehand. There was no leaks. There was nothing like that. So she she called it right. Uh, it is really good TV on, um, and it's well worth watching. Uh, it's quality. I think we've actually lost it. So we we have. Not, but... You're not going to get her back. I actually look at. I have a bit of empathy with you about the friends reunion. Um, I can understand why you would have thought that, but it's marketing. Like, they absolutely nailed that reunion. Calling it the reunion, getting them all back together. No. They absolutely nailed it. Get them all back together and film another episode. And then do another episode and another episode. Just drop five, six, seven episodes and solidify your reputation as good people. You are awful people for doing a chat show and reminiscing. Like, that, that can be done in any way. Don't use the Friends branding, is all I'm trying to say here. Um, it's a it's a hugely disappointing moment. Love and the Lou, uh, ring light, Tommy, you're looking, uh, you're, you're, you're popping Very off, off the screen. Uh, this morning, Tommy. Uh, we must mention the football pod before we quickly wrap up because it's another brilliant episode, Tommy. It's out now. Give us your 30-second pitch. 30-second pitch. Uh, so there's about 30 minutes previewing the football this weekend. A lot of talk about relegation and what might happen to Cork football and what's gone wrong in Cork since 2010. Uh, there's a worries about Armagh and potentially go away if they go down, the impact that could have on Cork Choice and Kieran McGinney. My favourite part of the podcast is possibly the first 15, 20 minutes. The lads are talking about the influence of the gym in their careers mm -hmm. and how seriously they took it. Who lifts the biggest weights in the Dublin dressing room? Who's the biggest in the, in the Mayo? And then in the last 15, 20 minutes, you played the clip about the weaker foot. And we also have a brilliant 15 minutes about video analysis. Randy Moran talks about not only doing analysis on his own opponents, 
but on his own teammates too. So that's worth checking out. Good stuff. That's available right now. Just to remind you that all this week on OTB AM, we're bringing you the chance to win a 150 euro expert electrical voucher with thanks to the good folks over at Expert Electrical, your home for large screen TVs this summer. It's a sporting summer at Expert, and you can find your perfect TV at expert.ie or in their 67 stores nationwide. We'll have a voucher winner each morning, and then one of those lucky winners will also have a chance to win a 55 inch Philips TV if their name is picked out of a hat in this Saturday's Off the Ball show. To be able to chance to win, name this morning's mystery voice. Because we've got the we've got the game coming that is winner takes all in that game, and I, I keep saying I'd have settled for that. Tweet your answer to us at Off the Ball. We're back after these with James McCarthy. OTB AM. This is OTB Sports Radio.